Hey fellow trailer enthusiasts, welcome back. Um, this video we're going to start working on the rear end of the trailer and I would uh, promised you earlier that I was going to cut the ramps apart and shorten them up but I've kind of changed directions and I want to show you why I've done that. Um, my goal with this trailer is to be able to pull cars on. Um, my wife has a Subaru Legacy that's been good but it's been trailered before and in order for that to be able to make it onto this trailer these ramps would need to remain pretty long but also this angle right here can't be too sharp because once the front tires pass over I don't want the bottom of the car to drag on the peak here also if these ramps are too short the bumper will hit when it's climbing up the ramp so as I, I walked around the trailer I had an idea that popped in my mind yesterday and I want to show you what I was thinking I'm going to cut so there's two frames here. There's an upper deck frame and a lower frame. You can see the lights right here. The lower frame ends right here. That's a, a 10 inch C channel. This is a, about five inch C channel right here. I haven't measured it yet. But I wanna cut this off and take the upper deck and low, back it off a foot. Go back 12 inches and add 12 inches in right here. And here's why. This lower frame currently is nine and a half inches off the ground. I'm gonna cut it and raise it up, but if I run this further back, so if I just add 12 inches, that's 12 inches, the top of this right here, this uh, straight bar, is gonna be where the bottom of the trailer will be. And so I'll still be, if I can competently run a measuring tape, I will still be 15 inches off the ground right there. So that would be adding 12 inches. If I add 12 inches to the top, this point right here is where the top would end. So what this will achieve for me is I'll be able to shorten up these ramps. I'll, I'll keep the same length on the slant, but I'll be able to shorten up this kickstand. And that will have, if I've done my math right, that will have this portion of the deck right here be able to be flat to the ramp when the ramps folded up. So I could use the ramp as a portion of the deck. But then also, let me fold this ramp real quick. So if I extend that, the ramp will actually be two inches shorter than the dovetail which means this portion of the ramp will actually land about right here. And then I'll be able to just cut off something like this across. I guess it would look kind of like that. Cut across there. And then I'll have one plane for the deck. I'll still have my same length for the ramps. The dovetail will be a little bit longer, but I'll have an easy approach for cars to drag on here and also for shipping containers to drag on here. So instead of a four foot beaver tail, it'll be a five foot beaver tail, which I think is reasonable. I don't see anything wrong with this. Right now we're four foot uh, four inches. And so we would go down to five foot four inches, which would land us right there. So I need to call our local supplier and see if they have any of this in stock, go pick it up and then I'll pull the deck off and I'll start cutting all the welds and we'll just lift this back portion off and stretch it back 12 inches. So if this is what you're into, keep watching. If not, share it with all your friends so they know what you don't like. And uh, I'll keep in touch. Thanks. I'm not sponsored by Makita, but if you watch my videos, you're gonna see Makita tools. If anybody from Makita is watching, I could use some batteries. Tried playing nice, had to get the Matco. If anybody from Makita is watching, any of my five subscribers are from Makita, the 3 8 impact would be nice.
guys probably can't see, but maybe you can. I've moved the trailer about eight feet this way and about two feet that way. I ran and picked up some steel, C-channel. Um, this is to extend the dovetail. This is a new cross member in the dovetail. Then I got this, was in a scrap pile. This will be stake pockets around the perimeter of the trailer. So uh, I know you're all thinking I'm insane for doing this, but this is what I enjoy doing and this trailer is going to be what I want when I'm done. So let's go to the back and I'll talk to you about what's going to happen back there. Right here on the back, we've still got two stake pockets that need to be removed. We're going to get those cut out. After those stake pockets are cut, we need to cut the frame on both sides right here. Just a square cut straight down. I'm going to do that with the grinder and the skinny wheel. Then this is ready to lift off. I'll roll the gantry crane around, come right here and lift this off. Hopefully not crush myself or any of my appendages. They currently all function and I like them that way. Um, after everything's cut off, this middle member is going to get removed and there will then be two members going perpendicular to the main frame. So this gap that's right here, there's two two-foot gaps. That'll become probably two 18-inch gaps where I'm adding one foot in. I don't know if you can see this hole. Probably this camera can. I, I blew through just a little bit. I'll have to look and see if I know anybody that can fix that for me. I'm going to move back with that same cutting torch and cut the stake pockets off now. I'm going to take you with me. cutting method that I haven't shown you before. This is a cold cut saw. They're a low RPM, high torque saw with a carbide blade. I love this saw. I don't use it much because it's violent and it's loud, but it's fast and it's clean. And it's the only saw that I have that I trust to put a true cut through this six inch channel. So I'm gonna measure out two 12 inch pieces on here and cut them. I'm gonna measure them at different times so I don't have to worry about the curve of the blade. So it's a pretty fast cut. This blade is old, so give me that credit. But these fine chips are just wicked. They're crazy hot, they're crazy sharp, they go everywhere. But that cut is unbeatable. You can see it's every bit as good as my dented square. So the hard thing and very important thing is to get this perfectly square, even if the cuts aren't perfect. So I'm gonna clap, clamp some straight edges, some angle iron to this to jig, uh, fixture it up to make sure it's uh, perfectly square. I'm gonna leave about a 16th of an inch gap so I can get a full penetration weld on that. and. Uh, Hopefully you see me do it and appreciate it. If not, tell me in the comments you hated it. This uh, extra one foot, not that it matters, is a heavier C-channel than the trailer frame is. Also gonna bevel all my edges real quick.
Thank you.